Good Tuesday morning, everybody. Welcome to the WLBB Community Voice Program. Our show brought to you by Tanner Health System, News Talk 1330, FM 106.3. Streaming live online at Newstalk1330.com. And this morning, we're on Facebook Live, the News Talk 1330 WLBB Facebook page. You can see my guest sitting across from me now. Her name is Vicki Anderson. She's the former District 2 Carroll County Commissioner. And she wants to be your chairman. She's come on our program this morning, and uh, we appreciate you coming down. Thanks. Good yeah. morning. Good morning. Um, we'll just set up the easy question first. Vicki Anderson wants to be your uh, your chairman. Uh, give us the spiel. Why? Why are you the gal to uh, run the show here in Carroll County? Well, um, Colin, I, I think that public service is a calling. You know, it, it's not a job. And um, I was retiring for my 12 years as district commissioner. Uh, for the northern end of the county because I feel like people don't need to stay in their position forever. So I felt like somebody knew uh, was needed that. And you the, did leave us with a good guy, too. I did. Oh, yeah. He's great. Clint Chance is wonderful. Um, the chair's position became, the chairman's position became available unexpectedly. Um, he got a job with the new governor. And so um, I felt like I was being led to step up. And um, then with my diverse experience as far as 12 years as a county commissioner, I've been a registered nurse for many, 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 many years uh, and experience in healthcare and leadership and came from Dallas, Texas with a, a hospital uh, corporation and I was a consultant to 38 hospitals. So I have a lot of healthcare experience and I work for Tanner currently. Um, and also I have been a small business owner. I'm a former vice chair. And I've always been known as my um, as the one that um, um, has the specific uh, detail. I'm detail oriented, so I feel like with all these qualifications, that um, I'm a perfect fit for and, the job. And you're not the one, not afraid to ask questions at meetings. That's correct. I, uh, yeah, to me to get to get down to the uh, to the specific answers. Yes, sir. Um, again, Vicki Anderson, our guest on this morning's Community Voice Program. I want to remind you that we're going to talk with all the chairman candidates this week on the Community Voice Program, 8.30 every morning. Uh, yesterday, Lee Powers was our guest. This morning, Vicki Anderson. On Thursday, John Wilson will be our guest on the program. Michelle Morgan on Friday. We would reached out to the fifth candidate, uh, Daniel Fagan, and uh, no response. So we'll uh, bring a different program for uh, Wednesday morning. I believe Holly Presnell will be our guest, so tune in for that program as well because she's, uh, she's just good people. Uh, again, back to, to Vicki Anderson. What, what are the biggest issues facing Carroll County right now? Uh, from what I'm hearing is uh, public safety. Uh, we are a training ground for public safety officers and uh, just public safety off overall, which I think includes sheriff, fire, police, 911 dispatchers. And, um, um, you know, and those are very close to my heart because I have a fabulous daughter that works for uh, 911 and a future son-in-law that works for Carroll County Sheriff's Office. And, um, you know, we need to incentivize those people so that they um, stay here and uh, become a part of our community and uh, and that we provide what we're supposed to, which is public safety to Carroll County. Mm -hmm. uh, this is your mailer, I'm guessing? Yes, sir. These are going out in the mail. Mm -hmm. um, leader, success, and promises. We can go over some of these things on here. The 12 years experience, as you said, um, registered nurse. So registered nurse, that'll be the gig you'd leave if you take over as chairman because it is a full-time job. That's to correct. Be chairman. That's correct. And my, um, my workmates aren't real happy about this. <laughs> So they're not going to vote for you. <laughs> I hope they don't sab try and sabotage me. Um, part of your success is uh, there's a list of things here, and, I, and I'm assuming these are things that you were instrumental in um, putting together in your 12 years as uh, commissioner. Yes. Okay. Uh, Fairfield voting precinct. Fairfield didn't have a voting precinct. That's correct. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and in and, and all these successes, you know, I'm not the only person. I'm just a part of a team in, in that uh, board. But uh, that was a – Getting that uh, precinct and then keeping it was uh, a big deal. Now, these will go out in the mail to potential voters. Then. Those went out to some, and then we're handing them out like crazy. So uh, not exactly sure. You know, we just qualified on Wednesday, and so uh, we're just getting our material and our signs and just getting started. Your your term, your 12th year, ended in uh, December. This yes. This past December. You and I had talked a couple times uh, towards the end, and this was something I think that you were hoping to, to look into before uh, your, your term had ended. Um, and, and I had brought it up to you initially, actually, an interest in tiny houses, um, you know, having smaller houses in the area. I mean, that, that would take some uh, um, some rearranging as far as uh, minimal allowing minimal 
uh, sized homes to be built. Right. It would. And, I mean, I like tiny, tiny houses. Is this something you're still interested uh, in? Is that something that you'd still... Uh, exactly. I, I think that we have to look at what the future of Carroll County is going to be. And down the road, I mean, it's like senior citizens. Uh, I'm a senior citizen. Uh, what do we need as our population grows older? What do we need for that? Mm-hmm. Uh, tiny houses are, uh, or senior communities or... Uh, we have to look at the future, and um, I think the future includes lots of things that we're going to have to look at to modify, but we need the input of everybody in Carroll County to do that. It's not just a, you know, a singular decision or anything. Vicki Anderson, our guest on this morning's Community Voice Program. Um, for tiny houses, would you, you envision a, a community, or would they be allowed just to sprout up, or would you be open to them just sprouting up in other uh, uh, communities anywhere? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know the answer to just that. Just something that you'd look you at. You have today. to go to the, yes, we'd have to look at all the zoning and all the issues that are at hand. You were on the commission last year when voters uh, went against the transportation SPLOST, transportation special purpose local option sales tax. Yes. Um, as chairman, would you bring that back to voters and try again? No. No. It's been up there. It's been uh, knocked around twice, and uh, it's been turned down. And um, I know, like, the Villarica area could use um, the transportation tax. Um, But I felt like, uh, from a county perspective, um, it wasn't being utilized exactly like I would want it to be utilized. And uh, so I think our SPLOST is very, our regular SPLOST is very important to us. That's where we get our roads and um, uh, highway treatments and all that and bridges and uh, it's important for us to keep that splossed mm-hmm. you you're probably very familiar with the budgets i guess over the past 12 years maybe you haven't seen this one yet but can you think of anything that um you know that could be taken out of the budget to make up for other things and you, know, you talk about the t-splossed how that's been uh, you know it's promoted as we need it to fix roads and things like that how will we fix those roads in the future well uh, for regular SPLOS. I mean, we have mm-hmm. allocation, and that's pretty much how our roads are paved right now is with the regular SPLOS uh, type situation. And um, the um, um, I just think it's important that um, uh, we not add another tax when we don't have to. Mm-hmm. Uh, before Marty left, probably in the last year, he was looking at a place to, to build an administration building. Wanted to see an administration building go up in Carroll County, I guess, to get all departments together. Is that something you would still be interested in doing? Well, and um, we got that approved as far as uh, uh, something to do with our SPLOST, mm-hmm. and so we need to deal with that. I think that one thing that he was waiting on was finding land or whatever, but we're going to have to make a decision if we have uh, SPLOS renewal uh that I hear is for 2020, then we need to uh, decide what direction we're going to go with that. Do you see a time when uh, the chairman would not put splossed out the voters? Because, you know, I wasn't here when it started. And I think it was at late 80s, 90s, maybe. Um, You know, initially when that was put out, I mean, there was a suggestion that maybe, hey, we won't need to keep doing this every time. But you never see anybody, you never see it not put out again. It's always uh, supported. Do you ever ever see a time or you think it's a permanent tax? No, the Carroll County budget, as far as just a general fund, cannot, um, there's not enough in it to do all road work and anything like that. That is just not there. So um, it's going to take that SPLOS to meet that need and then have the general general operating fund, you know, to run the county, which it's tight. Um, Another thing that you uh, ask about what I was hearing about in the county, and uh, one thing is we've got two new fire stations that have been, one's being finished and they're unmanned. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think that that is, um, and I understand in the new budget that those positions have not been budgeted. So I think that's real important that we're going to have to deal with that also. Mm -hmm. Vicki Anderson is a former Carroll County 2 or Carroll County District 2 commissioner, and uh, she wants to be your chairman. Election Day is coming up the 18th yes. of June, and uh, I'm guessing uh, early voting is that three-week period? May 28th May begins 28th that. Begins for, for, she's one of five candidates. 
that you'll see on the ballots. And uh, she is our guest this morning. Again, we're, we're on uh, Facebook Live this morning, the News Talk 1330 WLBB Facebook page. If you want to post questions and comments up there, I'll take a look during the break, and uh, it'll bring those uh, to Vicki this morning. Or you can call us. Traditional, the phone, 678 <laughs> 678-601-TALK. And Steve Graddick will uh, greet you on the other end. We'll come back with more Community Voice after this. At Tanner, we're advancing health throughout West Georgia and East Alabama because we know that exceptional care isn't based on how many patients we serve, but how well we serve them. That's why we're focused on quality, delivering the best possible care for our patients. It's why we're expanding our clinical services and building new facilities to serve our growing community. And it's why we're looking beyond our hospitals and medical practices to develop sustainable wellness and preventive health programs in our region. What makes a hospital great has changed. It's not how many beds we have. It's how well we care for the neighbors who need them. Delivering the right care to every patient, every time, is how Tanner is advancing health with medicine beyond measure. Learn more at Tanner.org or find a physician on our medical staff by calling 770-214-CARE. Welcome back to the WLBB Community Voice Program. Our show brought to you by Tanner Health System, News Talk 1330, FM 106.3, streaming live online, uh, the News Talk 1330 WLBB Facebook page. Our guest this morning, one of five candidates for the job of Carroll County Chairman, Vicki Anderson, she's former District 2 Commissioner, and uh, we do appreciate her uh, joining us this morning. Uh, two years would be the, the, what this seat uh, would be filling the unexpired term, and it's a little more than two years, a little no, less, less than two years. less, less. Yeah. It'll be December of 20. What do, what do you see as far as, or do you have an interest in carrying on? Is, uh... Well, and that's a point that, um, you know, as soon as someone gets into this position, you're, and gonna have to you're going to have to run yeah. again. So in April, usually that's what it is. You have to qualify to run. So you'll be in there for eight, ten months, and you're going to have to qualify a run again to decide if you want to do the four-year term. Mm-hmm. So you're not going to have much time to get into office and uh uh, succeed at anything because you'll be just uh, learning a lot of things and but um, yes uh, yeah I'm in it to win it, win it. and <laughs> I'm in it to to be the chairman yeah. what uh, what kind of things would you like to see happen I guess in this two-year period uh, what kind of things would you like to be involved in for the county and I guess even looking forward you know f- to the next four-year term if uh, if that's possible right well uh, I want to continue the work that Marty Smith started. You know, he had developed good relationships with people, and I want to work on uh, continuing those relationships and and maintain that process. Um, we've talked about uh, prioritizing uh, public safety and how important it is that we get that um, incentivized and uh, make them uh, people to uh, uh, stay in our in our county and uh, be have <laughs> have great jobs here. Mm-hmm. That's what we want. Um, the fire stations we talked about. Um, I want to make sure that we still protect our county's rural heritage and farmland preservation. Did you know that Carroll County is number one in beef production? I, and, I thought we were up there with poultry. I mean, in the yeah. state of Georgia. Mm-hmm. Um, chickens are number two in Carroll County, but Georgia produces more broilers for chickens than any place in the entire country. I mean, that's huge. So cattle's number one, chicken's number two. Uh, I mean, we have to preserve all this and uh, and make it work. To get rid of the rural. Right. Um, it, you know, had uh, had Lee on the show yesterday, and, and, and previously with him on count, uh, him on the – on the board of commissioners last year he went against um, some potential uh, subdivisions they were in his region in his district and that is you know predominantly rural area um you know what's your attitude when you approach potential subdivisions when somebody comes here and says hey i want to build 50 houses you know on my property this property that i own uh, how how do you go how do you work that out to decide whether you think that's good or not for carroll county well, it goes to planning and zoning, and then we have future land use maps. I mean, and they were just approved just recently where the public and everybody had input and where um, where you have high-density development and um, um, you have services. You have water, you have electricity, you have things like that. Um, 
there is future land use and so i feel like if you always go to the future land use map and start there with uh what everyone has agreed that that's where we want our county and the direction we want them to go in i think that that's that's what we have to do that's what you'll go by yes sir Um, as far as some of your promises here is he partnered with technical college to provide a skilled workforce um you know, i think we're kind of already doing that um you know you look at the buffalo court now that was initially supposed to be like a technology technology court um, right and you know taxpayers paid for that paid for that property right and now wgtc has it but taxpayers are paying for it again um, because it's coming from the state i mean how, how do you feel about that i mean that, that money the money's being is coming from the state it was in the state budget this year but again that's taxpayer money so twice taxpayers have, have paid for this this property it seems oh well i don't know the specifics of uh i haven't been involved with west georgia tech moving i have gotten uh, heard that they were going to be moving to uh, the tech park but uh um, the county bought that though right I mean, it was, yes, county was about yes seven eight years ago yes mm-hmm. it did and um uh, the one thing I was talking about partnering, I had heard uh, about how many skilled jobs that we have in Carroll County that are not filled. And um, it's just like the factories that we have. Uh, if we're going to produce chickens and we're going to do whatever and we've got to manufacture them, then they need laborers. And so I have an appointment with West Georgia Tech uh, in order to see about what we could do to partner in the event, identifying what the skilled needs are in Carroll County, and then let's partner. It's just like when Kia came to LaGrange. Um, The West Georgia Technical College over there agreed to always supply workers for the Kia plant. Mm -hmm. So that's what I was uh, in reference to. I got you. Uh, Vicki Anderson wants to be your chairman here in Carroll County, our guest on the Tuesday WLBB Community Voice Program. Questions and comments, feel free to uh, post on our Facebook page. Uh, Leslie McPherson did ask this question yesterday as well. I didn't get a chance to uh, to put it up there. So let me uh, – the floating homestead exemption. I think she was interested in that. Villa Rica um, brought that – I guess brought a lot of attention to that last year. Uh, what do you know about that, and do we see enough people taking advantage of that? Well, I heard about that question, and I tried to do some investigation on it. Um, I couldn't read it clearly online. <laughs> but um, – the um, in speaking with Vicki Bearden at the uh, tax um, office, she was saying that the floating exemption that you get that exemption when you automatically uh, apply for homestead exemption on your house. Say your house is twenty dollars and it increases over the time for thirty dollars, then you're only paying uh, county taxes on twenty. Um, the floating exemption, which talks about um, uh, 62 years older and incomes and that type thing doesn't apply to school tax. She said, Vicki Bearden said that you're automatically um, into the floating uh, homestead exemption. Where things change and what people have to do is that when you turn 65, you have to go back to the tax commissioner assessor's office tax commissioner's office and let them know that you're 65 then you get an additional eight thousand dollars homestead exemption and also you get an exemption from school tax so school tax is the biggest part of your tax bill so but you have to go there and so the floating exemption she said was included with the homestead exemption the change comes when you turn to be 65. so to talk about that for for homeowners it you know sounds great for homeowners it's like woohoo let's take advantage of that but that does impact the the budget for counties a lot right i mean that's so the potential to lose a lot of money in the budget there could be yeah and I think that was one of the concerns that, that was brought up last year. Um, Derek Newton says, hey. Tell him hi. Yeah. Um, He's a good man. Let's see. Logan Jackson asks um, if you would look for other ambulance services to serve the county. This has to do with public safety. Well, um, I, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, my understanding is that we have uh, an agreement, and, and I don't know what the specifics are. Um, expires, or- Sir, that's when it expires. You don't know that, right, or anything, or anything like that. So, um, I mean, we 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 need to look at everything as far as options out there. I did ask you about the transportation splost, um, and you would not support bringing that back out. But the question is, will you support any new taxes? Do you see a need to raise the millage rate um, in this year, or next year? Well, I would hope not. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that it would it would take um, uh, a real quality of life. Um, 
decision in order to have to to raise taxes. But I think if someone told you completely that they never would in their entire life, uh, I think that they would not be telling you the truth. And so, but it would take a big quality of life issue for that to happen. How do you pay for the public safety uh, raises, pay raises? Is that, I mean, do you think that... um yeah, I guess with, with properties and new people coming in, that there's going to be enough money to pay for those? Or do you see something in the current budget? I don't know. Hmm. But I think one of my plans is, I think, is to go to zero-based budgeting. And what we have to do is find out exactly where the money is. So if we go to zero-based budgeting in your department and you start with zero instead of 700000 then let's find out where every penny's going and then we at least know that we have done our due diligence in finding out uh, what we have. And if we don't have enough, then we come to the public and say, look, this is where we are. Um, you just have to keep everybody informed. Do your investigation. Do your due diligence. And, um, and move forward with it. And Be- educate the public and be transparent. Before we go to our break here, let me go back to that administration administration building. So. When, when we voted and approved SPLOST, it was listed as one of the projects that that SPLOST would pay for. Um, I mean, could you decide that we really don't need an administration building? That um, And then what would happen to that money? We need to address it. It's in SPLOST, um, mm-hmm. and I know there are consequences of, of not doing that. Um, it got brought up a couple times as, par at, as far as um, location and uh, that type thing. But... Uh, um, I don't know the answer to that without uh, doing research on it, but we need to address it. You know, right now we're holding the commission meetings in the old courthouse. It's not easily accessible for people to come. The the, uh, the park, yeah, the, park uh, the acoustics, uh, there's just lots of things. And then people are spread all over um, uh, town. So um, it's something that definitely I think would be beneficial, but we need to look at it. Vicki Anderson, one of five candidates running for the position of Carroll County Chairman. Uh, she's a former District 2 Commissioner, uh, representing primarily Villa Rica at that point, right? A little bit of Temple, too? Fair, uh, used to be yeah. until the rezoning, I mean, for redistricting with the census. But at so. one point, yeah, people yes. in Temple should recognize you and, exactly. and remember you as well. We'll take our final break. I think we'll come back with about eight minutes. If you want to give us a call or post some questions and comments on the News Talk 1330 Facebook page, I'll take a peek at those during the break, and we'll uh, put them up for Vicki. Last break here, Community Voice, brought to you by Tanner Health System, News Talk 1330, FM 106.3. At Tanner, we're advancing health throughout West Georgia and East Alabama because we know that exceptional care isn't based on how many patients we serve, but how well we serve them. That's why we're focused on quality, delivering the best possible care for our patients. It's why we're expanding our clinical services and building new facilities to serve our growing community. And it's why we're looking beyond our hospitals and medical practices to develop sustainable wellness and preventive health programs in our region. What makes a hospital great has changed. It's not how many beds we have. It's how well we care for the neighbors who need them. Delivering the right care to every patient, every time, is how Tanner is advancing health with medicine beyond measure. Learn more at Tanner.org. Or find a physician on our medical staff by calling 770-214-CARE. Heard a Rush Limbaugh promotion about a week or so ago on this station that talked about dead air and how that's an attention getter. So thank you for that, Steve. And welcome back to the WLBB Community Voice Program, our show brought to you by Tanner Health System, News Talk 1330, FM 106.3. And this morning we're streaming live on the News Talk 1330 WLBB Facebook page. Uh, something that did kind of make some headlines here in the last month, uh, commissioners uh, made the purchase of about $700 worth of mowing equipment. I think it was four tractors. And uh, had some local businessmen who, who sell this kind of thing. They were kind of frustrated that they didn't get a chance to bid on these. Um, the, the two that I talked to admitted, hey, we may not have been able to to match that bid, but nobody even gave us a chance. Why is that in the charter, or how is that phrased in the charter that, that it's represented like that? And, and I guess, how do you feel about that? Well, I think it was about $700,000. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, it, we need to put everything out to bid. You know, uh, and I know Mr. Pope gives, he has um, 
uh, equipment that he has in uh, that currently runs and you know has all the equipment and everything for repair. And he knows the equipment and he's and right. he's going back to equipment that he's used in the past. Exactly. As well. But we still need to put things out to bid. Um and um Well does that just, need to be changed in the charter? And, and I guess why I, I, I probably just took it for granted that that's something that we did anyway. I um, thought we did also. Yeah. Do you know well I, mean, I don't I don't know, know any specifics or details cuz I wasn't involved in mm-hmm. any of that. We got about five minutes left in the program. Do you have any uh, meet and greets coming up? I do. I have one tomorrow. Uh, it's at from five to six thirty at Uncorked in Villarica, mm-hmm. and um, um, it's uh, it's exciting, exciting to get started. With. People get a chance to ask you questions that maybe that sure. know, we didn't touch on this morning. Oh. Oh, me ask questions? Oh, well, they get a chance to ask questions yes. that maybe we didn't touch on this morning. Yes. Maybe there's something out there. Um, how about the website, Facebook page for promotion? Yes, I have a website and a uh, Facebook page, and it's Vicki Anderson for Carroll County. And so um, just go there, and it'll refer you, and hopefully to pictures and um, the websites.com and the Facebook page is just Vicki Anderson for Carroll County. Well, as we wrap up these programs, we do try to say, "Hey, here, here's two minutes. You know, step up on the uh, on the box and and tell us what you know. What are the key things we should think about when we're considering who to vote? Uh, you know, what are the things about Vicki Anderson that you want us to consider?" Well, with my 12 years experience, and um, I feel like I'm the most qualified for this job. I know on my flyers, I have. Um, experience that matters and and that does matter um this will be uh never in the history of carroll county has there been a um, chairman that has had as much government experience nor has there ever been one that's been a commissioner before and so um i uh i feel like that i'm perfectly qualified for that position um i have a proven record i think people know me for my honesty and integrity I've always been transparent. Um, I do hold, uh, I'm, a, I'm a question person. You know, if you come to ask for something, then um, I always ask what you needed it for and where the money was coming from. And um, I think that I would do that. I would do that as good steward, as a good steward of the, um, of the Carroll County citizens' money. Um, it's a team um, Commissioners need to be involved in all aspects of budgeting um, from the start to the to the end um, because, uh, you know, we only have a limited amount of money that comes in. And so to do everything that we need to do, we have to be good stewards and find out if there's waste anywhere. Um, that's just what we have to do. Um, whoever I, I have um, the ability to lead a team. I feel like I can make the tough decisions. I feel like um, that whoever gets in office is going to have, it's going to be an interesting, you know, you're going to have to qualify again uh, in a short period of time. Um, uh, I'm passionate about Carroll County. It'll grow with us or without us. And so we have to be smart and make the decisions of how it should be. We need a blueprint for Carroll County. And Abraham Lincoln once said, the best way to predict the future is to, to create it yourself. And I think that's it. I think that's for us. And I think that um, I have the experience that matters. Vicki Anderson is one of five candidates for Carroll County Chairman. Election day is June the 18th. When is uh, early voting start? May 28th. May 28th is early voting, so get out there and cast your ballot. Again, five choices. Uh, tomorrow we did invite the fifth candidate, Daniel Fagan, who did qualify last Friday for this race. Did not return our call, so he will not be on the program tomorrow. But Thursday you can tune in at 830. John Wilson will be our guest, and Michelle Morgan will be our guest on Friday. Again, we'll have them both uh, uh, on the program, and we'll be streaming live on Facebook for uh, both of those shows. Vicki, thank you for coming out. Thank you. And good luck. Yes, sir. And, uh, Thanks a lot. You. We appreciate you tuning in this morning to the News Talk 1330 WLBB Community Voice Program. Our show is always brought to you by our friends at Tanner Health System here on News Talk 1330, FM 106.3.